Hello, ladies and gentlemen. You Good to see me. you again. My name is Basil. I want to share something with you. You know, years ago when I was um, a youth pastor in Lagos, Nigeria, and my father in the Lord, he is my father, and uh, he is an Assemblies of God pastor, Apostle Joseph Ayoribe, shared a message. And that message touched my life so much that I meditated on it all these years. Hallelujah. And I want to share briefly part of that message. And the message is the power of preparation. You see, a lot of men and women are born with great potentials. They are born with gifts. So a lot of people have great potentials but no fulfillment. A lot of people are well equipped, well gifted, but their voice are not heard. Look at the music industry. A lot of people have the voice to minister, they have the voice to sing, but they don't they lack training. So they don't get to the top. Because God knows when men get to the top unprepared, they are going to crash. So we need to prepare for the tax ahead of us. We need to get ourselves ready for us to fit into the situation. And uh, my pastor said, and I quote, he said, every door has a particular key that unlock it. When we choose the wrong key and try to open a door, a certain door, we're going to spend years after years and the door will not open. So we need to look for the right key to open the right door at a particular time. So how are we going to do that? You see, our destiny has giftings, has potentials and treasures so we need to find out what those treasures are then we start operating in them preparing ourselves ahead before time before we get there because when in when we don't do that we're going to end up fulfilling people's dream and when we are fulfilling people's dream and destiny we are not going to be fulfilled ourselves we are not going to get to our right place in destiny and guess what we are not when we are not in the right place we can be replaced you see that's the more reason why we need to get ourselves prepared for the destiny for the assignment given to us and uh, it's so important to understand that opportunities in life are not luck. They are prepared for. But God has embedded in us potentials. And those potentials are inside of us. They lie dormant. Not until we activate it and put it to work, we're not going to get the best out of life. And some people are not even aware that they are loaded with potentials, with giftings. So they live life anyhow. They live life, they languish in penury when they're supposed to be a what figure, a what class. And why some that manage to get to the top, they crash. Why? Charisma will get us to the top. But character will crush us. So that's the reason why we need to develop ourselves in the feed, in the feed where we are called into. And for us to, to discover what has been delivered to us, we need to get ourselves acquainted with this book, the Holy Bible. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, Paul said, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and deliver an inheritance into your hand and bring you into your inheritance. So the word of God has the ability to build us up and show us what God has freely given to us. And Paul admonished Timothy some time ago. He said to Timothy, he said, neglect not the gift of God that is inside you. He said, give thyself wholly to it. That's that your, that your prophecy may appear to all. What is he saying? He said, do not neglect it. Meditate upon it day and night. You know, bring it out. Develop it. Bring it to lamplight. It's God's, it's God's will 
for us to shine and shine everybody so it's of god to give us the potentials then it's our responsibilities to develop the potentials and put it to limelight to harness it and bring out the best out of it so you might not know what you have not until you develop it and put it to work so a lot of people don't have this grace don't have this ability to wait to develop what god has delivered to them so they are in a hurry to shine they are in a hurry to be heard they are in a hurry to do things they are in a hurry they are just in a hurry and being in a hurry we always end us up to be a failure hallelujah now when we read the scripture and read the story about moses moses was born to, 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 to liberate the children of Israel from bondage, from Egypt. Guess what he did? He started with a burden in his heart. He saw that the Egyptians were tormenting the Israelites. Though he was in the palace, he was a prince in Egypt, yet he refused to identify with Israel, with the Egyptians. He has a burden and he thought he could function he could fulfill his destiny based on killing all the israelites one after the all the egyptians one after the other that was his plan that was his strategy and he started it he thought it was working he saw an egyptian beating up the israelite guess what he did he slaughtered him he buried him in the sand he started hunting around and God said, this is not going to get the job done. And guess what happened? Trouble started. Two Israelites were fighting. He tried to tell them, you are brothers. You don't need to fight. You are brothers. You can do things together. You know, <laughs> we are one. And the other one alarmed and said, who made you a judge over us? Do you want to kill me as you kill that Egyptian? He did it for them. And they talked against him. So he now knew he's not safe. He ran away. He wanted to carry out the ministry by himself at age 40. And guess what happened? God had to get him trained for another 40 years. Another 40 good years in the ministry. Before he was able to become the meekest man on earth. He was hot-tempered. And God had to get him broken. What was that trying to tell us? He's trying to tell us that God needs us in a certain assignment, but we need to be trained. How did he train Moses? Moses ran. And he ran to Jethro. And Jethro, he married to Jethro's daughter. And he started taking care of Jethro's sheep. He managed sheep for 40 years. He started thinking. He started protecting the sheep. He started feeling what the fee had compassion for the sheep. He trained, he got the sheep trained, they multiply mass, vast of sheep, plenty of them. He controlled them. He would take them out in the morning, he would take them through the wilderness, he would train them through the day, he would train them to field, and he would bring all of them back home. And God was training for good 40 years. And God said, It's time. He now showed him a bunny bush and said, Go to Egypt. The crowd, my people, have come to me. And now Moses moved. And when Moses moved, he moved with a certain confidence. And when he carried the children of Israelite, he was able to carry them along. At a certain point, the Israelite rebelled. God said he wanted to wipe them out and raise up the descendant from Moses. And Moses interceded for the whole Israel. Because he has a burning heart for them. He saw them as sheep. Why would they destroy all of them? You see, God got him trained. He was matured and fit for the job. How about you? There are some people, when they discover some certain potentials in them, they run. They move ahead. Especially in the area of ministry. They move ahead. They run. You know, a lot of them don't, a lot of ministers, they don't have fathers. A man that don't have father is fed, that don't have father is featherless. He can't fly. If he fly, he will fly to a certain height and he will crash. So that's the reason why 
we need to be patient in bringing out what God has fully deposited in us. Glory to God. 